Nick, great documentary. Loved it very much. Uh, very insightful. What was the process in the actually putting this thing together? Because it, it looked like you had a lot of very dangerous shots and the story was just so well done. Um, well, we couldn't have done this film without the support of National Geographic because there were some moments there that were pretty tricky. But, um, you know, we, we, National Geographic allowed us to tell a very, to distill very many complicated stories into a concise argument that for 93 minutes. So we always had the idea of using migration we like to use the micro to explain the macro. So we wanted to, we wanted to respond to the language of the president who had called Mexicans and migrants rapists and murderers. And we wanted to go there and, and see for ourselves who was actually migrating and, and what were their reasons. And then we wanted to put that in context with the political and social history of Mexico. But you can't do that without doing all side the equation. So people often, vilify the, um, the narco-traficantes as, as bloodthirsty murderers. And I'm not saying that there aren't bloodthirsty murderers, but, but what is driving a narco to be a narco? Like, so we went to the mountains in Sinaloa and we asked them, we spent, we spent weeks with them in the mountains and on the border um, in, in Sonora and in, um, in Baja California in Tijuana. Yeah. And that's the one thing I really loved about this is that you went into those, um, into the narcos and you actually found out like, especially in the smaller towns that where the smaller towns weren't really too, um, they don't trust the local officials. They trust the narcos more than the officials to keep them safe. And you delved into that, which you haven't really seen in much documentaries. What was the story about going into that and really showing those stories? Um, so we were very fortunate um, because we, we, the, our research led us to, um, you know, we had a variety of local producers that, um, that basically, um, uh, that, that they were men of their word and that the local um, um, crime bosses trusted. So it enabled us to get, you know, you know, access that in many ways has been unprecedented for, you know, uh, an American crew to come down. And then the difference between us and many other crews is they sort of come for a day and they leave. I would keep coming back. You know, we followed the caravan from Guatemala all the way our characters into Tijuana. I spent six months going backwards and forwards to Acapulco. I spent four months on the, in the mountains of Sinaloa and on the border. You know, we get to know our, our subjects. We're not just there for a day with, you know, I spent oh, two weeks living in the mountains with, uh, with, with that gang. Sure. And that's the one thing like, um, and another thing that you, your documentary touches on is a lot of the history between the political, the political issues in the United States and all the, all the, since the 60s, 70s and 80s, when a lot of the legislation was going towards and helping the, the lot like Colombia and, and, um, and how was that developing and showing that? Because in the documentary, you really, we knew about it and we kind of had a feeling that a lot of the policies were causing, were part of the cause, but you really yeah. went into it and you delved into it. Can you please explain on that and following the policies? Well, we wanted, there? Yeah, yeah, we wanted to, I mean, explain, um, uh, you know, the ramifications of certain things. And, you know, like the president, again, he said, oh, the deal, uh, NAFTA, uh, the North American Free Trade Agreement. You know, you think of NAFTA as, um, you know, this great business where, you know, the border um, uh, is basically uh, eliminated, but it's not true. It was only eliminated for the movement of cash and goods. And, and also, to a certain extent, because of the increase in trade, that also turbocharged the the, business, the importation of narcotics into America, because if you've got now 10 times as many trucks, it's, it's 10 times as easy to put cocaine on those trucks. Um, but, you know, um, NAFTA, NAFTA, in order for um, Mexico to sign, the NAFTA, the, to sign NAFTA, 
then they had to change their um, Bajido land uh, ownership laws. And so there are all these little ramifications of the, the change of Mexico from an agrarian to an uh, a urban culture that we, we only just touch on. We touch on the oligarchy that was created by the PRI in order to continue to preserve um, their, um, their hegemonic um, uh, um, uh, regime. We touch on the corruption of, of, of the Central American governments and the lack of projects and the lack of jobs for um, uh, the, the um, for Hondurans, since, uh, El Salvadorians and Guatemalans. Mm -hmm. you know, um, but you could, none of these are mutually exclusive. Yeah. Merida, yeah. NAFTA, American foreign policy, narcotics as a political tool these all are interlinked migration mm -hmm. you can't separate the two so we had to bundle it all together mm -hmm. and do you and one thing that you mentioned in doc mary wells is the narcotics and how much money is how much how much narcotics are sold in the united states do you feel like if after doing this documentary like if narcotics was down and people were using it less in the united states a lot more there'd be a lot easier of tensions on the border? Well, I think it's, I think, I think reducing demand for narcotics is, is very difficult. I mean, um, but you can see with cannabis, how the legalization of cannabis has reduced incentive to smuggle it because, um, it's, there's a very low value to weight ratio. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, cocaine is different and, and, um, but if you were to look at cocaine in the same way that people are looking at marijuana, you de-incentivize the, um, desire, the, the economics of, of, of cocaine smuggling. And, um, but the bigger issue would be is how do you, it, legalization isn't a panacea. What would you do with the 500,000 million people who are involved or rely on the narcotics business on their daily basis. Where do you draw the line? Do you have a truth and reconciliation committee? Or do you look at the soldiers of the, the narco soldiers, not people making decisions, but the soldiers? Do you look at them as victims of a corrupt political system in the same way you look at the migrants? How do you do this? How do you reintegrate these people into society? Once you're an outlaw, you're an outlaw. How do you bring them back? So this is not an easy solution to move forward. Yeah. Nick, thank you so much for talking with us. Really appreciate it. And I believe this documentary is something you have to watch, especially before the election coming up on November 3rd. Really gives you a lot of insight. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias para todos. Thank you.